This is going to be how to get interested in the Bible. Are you not interested in the Bible? If not, you really need to be. I've found that my biggest burden in doing these studies and anytime I'm studying is I want to be able to get someone else interested in the Bible. So I've thought of some ways that will help you get interested. And the first one is to realize the Bible is supernatural. In 2 Peter 1, 17 through 19, it says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Run to you do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So what Peter is saying here is that even though he walked and talked with Jesus Christ, he saw miracles, he heard the Father's voice from heaven, he still counts the word of God that he holds in his hand as a more sure thing, a more sure word of prophecy than what he saw with his own two eyes. So having the King James Bible in your hand is just as sure and trustworthy than seeing it with your own eyes. Peter said he has a more sure word of prophecy. All the things in the Bible are coming to pass and will come to pass. People look to psychics to tell them the future or to crystal balls or to Ouija boards, but the people don't understand that we have a sure, more sure word of prophecy than anything that you can see with your eyes because it's supernatural. Titus 1-2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God can't lie, and God who is, is the one who wrote the book, it will all come to pass. God is a supernatural God, and he wrote a supernatural book. The quicker you realize you are holding something that came from another world, the quicker you will get interested in the words. You are holding something in your hand that is not of this world. People are interested in UFOs and visitors from outer space and those types of things that they don't believe are living in this world because they love the unknown. They love to watch TV shows about the unknown. They would love to go down to the bottom of the ocean and discover a new species or treasure. But what they don't realize, the Bible is a treasure. The Bible is unknown and contains many things that are yet to be discovered. It is eternal and has always been. Uh, when you realize the Bible is supernatural, you will be like the disciples in Mark 10, 24, when they were astonished at his words. There are some things in the Bible no one has discovered yet, and maybe they won't until we are with Jesus Christ, because in Romans eleven thirty three it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Psalms 119, 160, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. God would have to be lying about telling the truth for his word not to be real. I'd rather be believe God telling me his word is true than to believe some atheist or Bible-correcting false preacher telling me it's not true. I'd rather believe God. I'd rather believe God who is all-knowing than to believe someone who wants to be a God themselves or their own God. 1 Peter 1.25, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So the word of God will always be here. He promised to preserve it. What other book is supernatural in that he will it will clean up your life just by reading it? Romans seven thirteen says, Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. You see, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. The Bible which has the commandments of God in it, will cause you to see your sin as it really is. It's the opposite of television and sissy preaching. Those sayings soften up the sinfulness of sin, but the Bible shows you sin is exceeding sinful. 
while a hard-hitting sermon from a real preacher can make you feel guilty and put you under conviction on Sunday, if he can't get you interested in the Bible, then you will be back to the world on Monday. Hard preaching is good, but teaching the Bible and Bible study is just as important because it gives the body of Christ an interest in the Bible. They can read it all week and be put under conviction even when they aren't in Sunday services. And a huge problem with many Christians is they think God is at the church house more than he can be at their house. The house of God isn't a building anymore. It's in you. You can worship at home. You can read the Bible at home. You can study at home. And I'm not saying not to go to church or saying anything against church. I'm, I'm just saying that ch uh, Sunday morning shouldn't be the only time you take the book out. But the church building has been raised up to a place where people think they have to be there to be saved or be there to be right with God. You can get saved anywhere. You can get right with God anywhere. A fair, a fair and balanced view on the subject of the church building is that there is not anything supernatural or holy about the building. And going to one doesn't necessarily mean you're getting closer to God. However, there's nothing wrong with going to a church building. Uh, calling it a Bible building and telling others not to go has become a hobby horse for some. And they have taught this for so long that it has brought nothing but division. And they also will base a man's salvation off of it, I've heard many times. But sometimes a person can get so into his hobby horse that his, con his conviction becomes another one of his standards that everyone has to meet to be saved, you see. But you need to realize that just going to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night is not enough. You need to read the Bible every day. You need to listen to preaching every day if you can because it's really available out there. There's tons of free preaching everywhere you look. But the Bible will cleanse your mind throughout the week while reading it. Psalms 119 and verse 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So how are you going to cleanse your way? With the word. Pro Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the best way to transform a dirty, perverted mind is to read the book. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. The Bible says, Who hath marked his word and heard it? Psalms 1, 1 through 3, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So, you want to get interested in the Bible? Realize it's supernatural. It's got supernatural stories. It does supernatural things. It's supernatural because it's the only book where you can contact the author just by coming to him in your heart the best way you know how, through prayer. Next, realize the Old Testament is more than just a story. All throughout the Old Testament, you read stories about great people of the faith, and the stories are more than meets the eye. In each story, you have a picture or shadow or type of something else. You can find the Lord Jesus Christ all through the Old Testament in pictures and types. And this brings this, this, bring this to someone's attention. You can get them interested in the Bible this way. Tell them how Adam, giving up his rib for God to create his bride, pictures Jesus Christ getting pierced in the side to get his bride. When he died on the cross, Jesus died on the cross to get his bride. Adam was put into a deep sleep to get his bride. When Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, he told Isaac that God would provide himself a lamb. Emph emphasis on the word himself. He had Isaac carry the wood on his back, just like Jesus carried the cross on his back. Isaac obviously foreshadows the Lord Jesus Christ, while Abraham shadows shows us God the Father. You see, all these pictures and types in the Old Testament, if you read the Old Testament and you realize these things, you're going to get interested in the Bible. The Bible's going to come to life for you. Another thing is, 
learn the dispensational truth of the Bible. And a lot of my friends will turn this off on this point because they don't believe in dispensations. But in Galatians 4, 16, Paul says, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? There are many people who pride themselves on being non-dispensational, which is fine. But one of the things that kept me in the Bible and in constant Bible study was learning the dispensations and figuring out where to rightly divide. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, so there is right division, there's no division, there's wrong division, and there's over division. Like everything else, you want to find the, the right balance, the correct balance. A dispensation is in a period of time, it's God dispensing something. However, I know... When a man says a dispensation is God dealing with man in a certain way in a certain period of time, that I mean, that's correct to a certain extent. Because God does deal with men differently throughout the Bible. He doesn't ever change himself, according to Malachi 3.6, but the way he deals with man changes. If you read the Bible and you realize the whole thing isn't meant for you to take as doctrine, then you're going to come out a lot less confused. The whole Bible is for your learning, according to Romans 15, 4. And the whole Bible is there to get practical application. But you can't go back to the Old Testament and see where they're sacrificing animals. And then you start sacrificing animals. And I mean, if you can make that clear division right there, you are a dispensationalist, whether you believe it or not. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. However, to say that the whole Bible is for you and that you are trying to take the whole thing for yourself doctrinally, that wouldn't be rightly dividing. For example, you're not going to offer an animal to get temporary atonement for sins because you've got Jesus Christ who died for sins once and you believe on him and your sins are gone. And he's the, the real sacrifice. Hebrews 9.12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. So it is a different time that we're living in. We don't sacrifice animals. We don't keep the Sabbath. God isn't telling anyone to get physically circumcised. He's not telling someone to abstain from eating off of a tree. He's not telling anyone right now to build an ark to miss a flood. He's not telling anyone to abstain from taking a marker in their right hand or in their forehead that will damn them to hell. Uh, all these people worried about taking the mark of the beast right now, he, there's a lot of things that are uh, pushing us in that direction of the mark of the beast. But if we're if the body of Christ is still here, then the mark of the beast isn't here. We're in a different time right now. The time we are in now isn't like the time of Jacob's trouble. And it isn't like Old Testament times. And if you keep this in mind, as you read your Bible, you will get a lot less confused. And you will be a lot more interested in the Bible. You also won't doubt your salvation when you read Matthew, Acts, Hebrews, and James, if you'll realize these clear dispensational truths. And a lot of these newer non-dispensationalists aren't necessarily interested in the Bible, but rather what their pastor says about the Bible. And when they read it, they will view it through the lens of what he says. But I'd like to know how they can claim Hebrews 6 as a doctrine for themselves without only giving practical application. Learning the doctrine of the Bible can help make it come alive. And when you speak doctrine, you speak with authority. Uh, don't be scared to take the strange things in the Bible as literal. That's another one. If you want to be interested in the Bible, don't be afraid to take the strange things as literal things. There's some parts of the Bible that may seem boring, this is because it is a, a book that will talk about man's life, and man's life is boring. However, there are many interesting and strange things in the Bible. Strange things. Uh, many fundamentalists are so worried about their image and their legacy 
that they will spiritualize all the strange stuff because they're worried about looking weird. But there are some strange things in the Bible. I mean, there's strange things all the way through it. Read Genesis 6. Read the book of Daniel. Read the book of Ezekiel. The book of Isaiah. Uh, read the book of Revelation, of course. You see all these strange things. And if you stop trying to make it fit your own little world, you know, calling, uh, you know, the locusts in Revelation 9 helicopters and, you know, just making everything to where it would could happen in this age that we're in now, uh, that just is, that takes away the power from the Bible. Or, you know, people just don't even want to acknowledge the millennial kingdom. I mean, you don't hear many sermons about the, the events of the tribulation or the events of the millennial reign when people are living to be 900 years old again and animals that usually would kill each other or laying down next to each other. You don't hear people talk about that much anymore. It's because they're afraid of looking weird. And fun, most of the fundamentalist crowd, they're so afraid of looking stupid or not looking like a, a big shot to all their peers that they just disregard all the supernatural things of the Bible. And it's made people not interested in the Bible no more. All these preachers, they're more concerned with a flashy sermon and a, a flashy suit and looking like such a, a prestigious fundamentalist preacher that they have thrown out the book. They're letting the lights go out on the book. But this has just been some quick things to hopefully get some people interested in the Bible. As the Bible says, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Get up every day and read it. Pick you out a chapter to start memorizing it. Pick you out a certain topic and start studying it. The greatest thing you can do is, is get close to God through His Word.